QA is a lowest ranked job in the software development lifecycle. False mm. statement. You need to know how to code in order to become a software QA engineer. Another mm. false statement. And many others that I have noted throughout my experience working as the QA engineer, lead manager, and a senior engineering manager of SDAT for the last 10 years. Today, we're going to be a QA myth busters. And that's going to happen because quite a lot of you guys from YouTube who wanted to become our future QA engineers or who wanted to take a course, call me to that number and ask me questions related to these myths. So I don't want you to keep asking the same questions. So I decided to record a video and answer all of them in one short video right here. So let's quickly hit that like and subscribe buttons below this video and let's get started. First one, software can be bug free. This is a first myth, and honestly, I did think that way when I was just starting my career back in 2013 or 2014. During those days, I thought, well, I'm, I'm a maximalist. I'm the guy who likes to pick up any kind of job or any kind of challenge and do it until the end, do it until the last one. Same thing applies for QA. I thought that I can find all of the bugs and developers can fix all of the bugs. We can have a perfect software. No, this is impossible. Because whenever developers fix 100 bugs, on average, they will create 27 new ones. So 27% of issues are created whenever 100 are fixed. Based on that, you can go infinitely fixing issues. And maybe one day you will if you are not developing your product. But if software is getting developed, software is getting expanded, for example, in a simple human words, if Facebook is constantly adding new features, Everything else they add new, there will always be a bug. When they try to fix that bug, maybe something else, some of the old functionality will break. Maybe when they add a new functionality, the functionality they're adding simultaneously will break because they have a lot of code changes, they're touching a lot of places. So that's very possible. And based on that, it is impossible to have a bug-free software unless developers are not expanding functionality. Second one, QA job is boring. I completely disagree with it. QA job can be fun. And actually, when I worked as a manager, I understood why in some companies it wasn't fun, it was boring for me. It's because it all depends on a manager. Yes, I am kind of saying that I'm a good manager, but based on the feedback that I've got of the, all of the people who work in my team, it is the case, it is the truth. And regardless of the job that you're doing, if your manager is an asshole or a toxic person, you will not be able to have fun. But if we're not talking about a manager, if we're talking about a position overall, I can say that QA is fun in most cases, depending on your personality. I like to develop, I like to learn new things. Whenever I work for a company, I jump into new tools, new processes, things that I've never done in the past. I meet people that I never met in the past, so it's always fun for me. So. Whenever you are getting your first job, second job, third job, it will be fun for sure. Unless you've been working for 10 years, maybe then you will know everything and then it will become boring for you. But in that case, who cares? You made so much money, you got so much experience that you can choose your next path. Maybe you will become a developer or maybe you will become a QA lead manager or director or a vice president of the quality assurance. I have even seen those type of titles in the past. QA is only about testing and finding bugs. That's a very common misconception that I also had during my days back in 2013-14. So basically, software testing and looking for bugs is one of the processes that is the part of the quality assurance, which is a huge concept which involves a lot of things into it. And software testing is just one of those things. So whenever you are talking about a software testers, those are actually might be separate people from the quality assurance engineers, because quality assurance engineers will not only have to look for the box, test, test the software, verify the tickets, verify the requirements, they will also have to find the ways and build the processes and solutions for preventing the bugs of happening. So basically, in my own words, I could explain quality assurance in two terms. Number one, we have to prevent the bugs. Number two, we have to find them as soon as possible so we could save the money to the company we're working for. Manual QA is too easy. Well, for some people, it might be too easy. For others, for example, like a friend of mine who's working as an engineering or senior engineering manager in 
one of the food delivery companies in the United States, says that sometimes she works until midnight or longer because they have to release new things during the midnight because during those hours, there are less people using their app to order food in the US. So it can be easy depending on your job and your ambitions. Because when I got my second job, I didn't do much. I would only test things for two to three hours per day. And the rest of the time, myself and all the developers in a company, we would be watching movies. We would be playing games at the beginning of my job. But in two, three months, I started feeling like it's becoming boring. So I started to learn new things, including test automation. But if we're talking about a QA manual, you can see that you can be just like my friend and learn quickly, be a very ambitious person and become even a senior engineering manager in one of the fastest growing food delivery startups in the United States. Actually, it's not a startup anymore because it's a big company. Or you can be just like me during my second job when I didn't want to do much and I was actually chilling. So it is kind of the myth and it is kind of the nut. It depends actually on you. QA automation engineer cannot apply for a job of SDAT, which is software development engineer in test. So actually quite a few of our students did ask me that question or people who wanted to sign up for the course before they did. And I always do say that, yes, as the QA automation engineer, you can easily apply for an SDAT position. But not every company will consider you because in majority of companies, SDAT position will equal to QA automation. And that's not for every single company. Actually, software development engineer in test means that you can develop a software. You can be a software developer and also you can be a QA automation engineer because software developer development engineering in test. But lately, majority of companies, they started using as that position as the cool name for the QA automation position. And a lot of companies are hiring as that's and if you apply for it as the QA automation engineer, you can go through an interview, you can get the job. And for those of you guys who actually like to write the code and who are somewhat technical QA automation engineers, it is not going to be very difficult for you to become actual as that and learn how to do development because you already know how do you write the code? You already know how to write test automation frameworks and updated tests. So if you are a QA automation engineer and if you like to learn development, actually we are planning to open up a software development course at our Codemify school. I'm going to leave our links to Instagram and the Telegram communities so you could keep in touch with us and would get the latest updates about the course coming soon. You need to code to become a QA engineer. That's not true. We had a lot of students who became QA engineers and then QA leads. And even this guy, I think on this side, I'm going to add a video. He became a QA manager only within two years or two or three years, if I'm not mistaken. And he did not do any coding for his company. He just became a QA engineer, lead and the manager. So it all depends on you. If you do like to code, you can give it a shot. If not, no problem at all. But just FYI, on the market, there are approximately 65 to 70 percent, I would say 60 to 70 percent positions of the QA automation engineers and about 30 to 40 of manual QA engineers because most of the companies, they are, are, they are trying to save money and the QA automation engineer can replace quite a few manual QA engineers. Although this brings us to the next point because it is impossible to replace manual testers completely. Yes, it is a myth. People think that QA engineers or AI will take over the world, will take over QA automation engineers, manual QA engineers, developers, and everyone else. No, this will not happen for a long time. In the future, one day, AI will take over everything that's possible, but it's going to take a lot of time for this to happen. So for now, QA automation engineers cannot replay manual QAs because there are things which should not be automated, such as, imagine this, you are creating a website or you're a business owner. You're coming up with a new Facebook. And today is a day one. Your developers created first homepage. Would you hire a QA automation engineer and pay probably 25% more? If user interface, what you see will possibly change in a couple of days. No, you won't because you don't want to lose money, right? UI might change. So there is no reason to automate it yet. When it gets stable, when you know we're going to keep it like that for a while, then yeah, it will make a lot of sense to automate user interface. 
So in the future, you would not have to have manual testers to test things over and over manually again when your QA automation engineer can simply write a code and it will run so you wouldn't have to waste the money on manual QA engineers. Quick and a very interesting information. Did you guys know that out of 1000 views on average, my channel is getting 42 likes only? That's bad. That sucks. And I hope we can fix it this time. Thank you. And let's continue. Only QA engineers are responsible for the quality of the product. This is definitely a myth and it's a big one because myself and a lot of you guys, when you started your first career or whenever you will get your first job, you will think, oh shoot, it's all on me. I am the only person responsible for quality or my team is the only one responsible for quality. No, that's not true. Every single part, every single member of the software development lifecycle is responsible for quality. Developers, whenever they are developing the software, product owners, whenever they are coming up with the features, designers, when they are designing, every single person can prevent the bugs. Every single person can make something to make sure that this flow will have the end. This flow will not be open-ended and when you click some button, there will be no expected outcome and you don't know what's going to happen. So every single person in a software development lifecycle is responsible for the quality of the product. And when you miss a bug, it can happen. Actually it happened to me. I did miss the huge bug. Actually, I missed them a couple of times and they went to production. So what's going to happen next is the team is going to get together and see why did this happen? How did we miss that bug? And it's not necessarily you that have missed that bug. Maybe your company did not have certain processes in place that will have to be added in place. So you or the other team members would make sure that these type of issues will not repeat again. This is called RCA, root cause analysis. It, it is a standard process, so no pressure if you are a QA engineer and if you did miss a bug. It happens. It happened to me one more time. QA is a lowest rank job in the software development process. It is definitely not true, but it is a very common misconception, misunderstanding or a myth because every single person, as I mentioned before, is a part of the SDLC, software development lifecycle, is equally important and is equally responsible for the quality of the product. Although we are quality assurance engineers, we do the most testing, we do the most process related to the quality, but every single person is responsible for it. So whenever you get your job or whenever someone tells you that QA is the worst job or QA is the lowest ranked job, no one respects you, that's definitely not true. Your job is actually one of the most important jobs in the team because if not you, a lot of bugs will go to production. A lot of customers will not be happy and a lot of customers will not pay for the product anymore. So your company will lose money, your company will go out of business if you will not have software quality insurance engineers in place and quality processes. So it should give you a good idea that QA is actually one of the most important jobs in the software development process. The last one and possibly pretty funny one, women are better at testing. Some of you will find it funny, some of you will not, but I will definitely agree with it as if I will get home, I'll be in trouble. I'm just kidding. Honestly, I don't think that's true. I think that's the myth. But women have some advantages whenever they are looking for the job. And I'll give you a quick example. I've been working as the QA manager for a while and I've, I've hired quite a lot of people. And some time ago, I did approach by a recruiter. I was hinted. I was not asked. I was not required. I was just hinted in a nice way that we have a diversity and we have to make some decisions to improve our diversity. So, women, you have advantages in front of the men, but no pressure, feel free to use those advantages if they exist. And by the way, if you are interested in becoming a QA engineer or learning how to become a QA automation engineer, I'm going to leave a link right here to the free trial so you could try what is a manual QA for free right here. And right there, I'm going to leave a QR code for the free trial for the QA automation position so you could see how am I performing my QA job or how am I writing the code and what am I doing. Great, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a comment below. And even if you did not, I would like, I would ask you and encourage you even more to leave a comment below. So you could tell me what would you like to be improved in these videos. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next week.